Dun dun dun! Hey folks! Welcome to Let's Play for a Day! A game I'm only going to play once, and afterwards, never again! I'm your host, TPC Gamer, and today, we're going to be playing a game called Zombie vs. Ambulance, which I know isn't exactly what it says on the title screen, but that is what this game was called in Japan. See? By the way, I totally own the Japanese version of the game as well. Woo! Now, I choose to go by the Japanese name because it's funnier to me, and because the English one is just so generic. Like, you might as well just call it Drive Game or something, you know? Anyways, I choose to load a game rather than beginning anew because the intro to this game is about 20 minutes of still images. And you don't even need it. Like, you know the plot already, dear reader. It is half past zombies. And we play Dr. Labcoat, so we were in the hospital during the outbreak, and now we're taking the ambulance out to look for survivors. Much like Season 5 of The Walking Dead, only with a lot less police brutality. And, like, something actually good happens in this game. Which I don't consider to be a spoiler for The Walking Dead, because the plot synopsis of that show is... It gets worse. Also, fun thing about this game, the working title was Zombie vs. Loading Screens, for reasons that will become apparent as we progress. So, the yellow gauge in the top left indicates morale in the hospital, and we can restore it by getting chain kills on the zombies that we find roaming the streets. Like that! The longer chains restore more morale, but they get progressively harder and harder to get. And that's one of the reasons this game can be a little hard to get into. Like, to begin with, you have very little morale at the hospital, and you're in a pretty weak vehicle, so it's hard to get the required combos. He says, doing kind of quite well, actually. <laughs> oh, I was hoping I'd get a 20 kill combo. That being the next point where you get some morale back. Ah, but that'll do. That's the motto of my channel now. So, we're not just here to drive around killing zombies. No, sir. There is another game mechanic, which... the game is actually stubbornly refusing to show me. Oh, wait, never mind. Here we go. Just have to get into this building. Oh, by the way, this incredibly out-of-place corridor exists solely to have a boss fight later on. Alright, where are you? Aha! So, Zombie vs. Ambulance, aside from being a brutal tonal shift compared to the previous two videos in this series, is Crazy Taxi! Oh, and you're a mechanic. This is the absolute best combination of people we could have found at this point in the game. So, now that we found some survivors, we have to get them back to the hospital. There is a time limit, the people we picked up are infected with the zombie virus, and if we don't get them to the hospital in time, they will turn undead, and we lose them. Although, quite why they become healthy once we get them to the hospital, I don't know. I mean, logically, we have some kind of vaccine, but if that were the case, why aren't we heading out and crop dusting the cure, instead of driving around turning zombies into paste? I mean, probably because that video game would be even more boring than this one. <laughs> But if you want me to smile, no matter what, stock crowd cheering sound effects when there is no crowd is a very good way to do it. Anyway, the people you brought back on your last couple of runs will show up in the garage, and you can talk to them for a bit of plot fluff. Like this. But we're here to talk to this guy, Engineer Jones. Mechanics let you develop mods for the ambulance. And I'm going to go straight for the broad bumper because I know what that is, and it's amazing. And as you can see, we need to kill 40 zombies to unlock the broad bumper. Now, also in the garage, we have our chief of medicine, who, frankly, is just way too sexily to be doing biochemistry. And she acts as our in-game manual. And we also have Nurse Heidi, apparently. And she gives you the stats about the hospital and your vehicles, but she mostly makes me wonder if anyone at D3VSC knows what a medical uniform looks like. Or she looks like somebody's power girl nurse OC. Like she has a boob window for crying out loud! Although, 
despite what it sounds like, I'm absolutely not complaining. It's just... That's not what nurses look like, you know? Whatever, let's go kill stuff, get the broad bumper. There is a huge stack of things you can develop for the ambulance. You can also develop a bigger ambulance, eventually, which... Kinda seems a little bit silly to me. Like, surely the hospital just... has those, right? Oh, and there goes me, trying to apply logic to the zombie apocalypse again. Alright, let's go kill stuff. WITH THE SIRENS ON! There is no benefit to having the sirens on. It just speaks to the childish part of my brain that is forever six and enjoys pushing buttons, you know? Or is that just me? And you know, I kind of want to go through my videos and find all the bits where I've described the various parts of my brain and what they do. Because I know I've talked about the reptile bit that enjoys breaking things. And the childish part that always makes me laugh whenever I hear the word Wyoming. <laughs> but like, it would be interesting to see what CPC Gamer's phrenology looks like. And by interesting, I mean even more horrific and wrong than the regular kind of phrenology. Ooh, but I am going to show this off. This post on the left is the box art for Splattermaster, which is another game made by the same team. You may remember Kakashi from All Star Fighters. And I've got no idea what the post on the right is meant to be. But I'm pretty sure it has Ryo Fudabar on it. She better be on it. She's the company's actual poster girl. Ooh. This was a happy coincidence. So get in, loser. We're going to the hospital. Which is... Right across the way, actually. Like, you could have made that run yourself. Come on now. But whatever. We're home now. Returning to the hospital refills all, or most, of the morale you've lost while out in the field, so it's always good just to go home and check in. Alright, now back to the grind. And I suppose this is as good a time as any to talk about what I make of the game. Because you can make plenty of things, like a brooch, or a hat, or a pterodactyl. Anyway, what we have here is a really solid proof of concept. Post-apocalypse crazy taxi is a phrase that gets better with each word, but this game misses the mark, mainly because you're just shuttling people back to the hospital. I mean, by all means, make this something like Fallout or Mad Max. You know, you go through the wasteland, but you take on the raiders. Or hell, keep the built-up urban aesthetic, but make it actual crazy taxi. You know, the water purification system is broken. Get me to the water tower. Or, you know, I heard the survivors at the train station. Let's go! That sounds great! I'd play that! And you could still be based out of the hospital. So you could drive to, like, implausible vehicles and develop and install the mods. Like, the one that I'm about to go home and install. Pretty sure it's near that fast food place. Oh, so it is. Excellent. Now, we'll get back to the topic of how I'd make the game better in just a second, because right now, I'm going to show off the new toy that we just built. Once you've completed development on an item, you have to speak to the mechanics to confirm it, and... Do you know what? I think I'm going to start developing the bare bones tires while I'm here, because... Why not? Now, having done this, you... Um... There's meant to be a second mechanic in the garage now that'll, that'll let you swap and change mods. Alright, what if I scroll them off screen and go back? No. Okay, I guess that only really works with sprites and not models. Second thing to try, leave and come back in again. Day one, lesson one of my computing degree was how to turn things off and then back on again. Have you tried forcing an unexpected reboot? And then day one, lesson two, was percussive maintenance. And everything after that was coming to terms with the fact that you just paid nine grand for someone to read PowerPoints to you. Ooh. Now, I did not mean to find you, but look at you that I did. This gives me a chance to explain what the different survivors do. Male and female civilians restore a bit of morale. You can find soldiers, which increase their maximum morale and policemen slow the rate at which morale drops. And then there's the mechanics. Obviously, the more of those you have, the more stuff you can build. And 
you can do some really awesome stuff with those, and hopefully, we'll be able to show off some of that right now. Or maybe not. I did finish developing the broad bumper, didn't I? Yeah. Hmm. Has he spawned, but he's just not showing? Weird. Well, I guess something broke. But this gives me an excuse to show off the final NPC in the garage. The secretary here has access to the most sinister and insidious of all magics. The mystical Saveload function. And we're going to use this. And with this, we're going to travel to Earth 1. Also known as my primary save slot. And we're going to show off some more of the cool junk that I built. But yeah, see? There's a mechanic in the corner, and he's ready to upgrade things. Oh, and what things? Let me show you my collection. This is the ambulance I use when I'm cosplaying the Legion of Doom. This one is for recon and civilian rescue. This one is a giant golden death chariot. And this one is a police car, because the developers missed the memo that the game is called Zombie vs. Ambulance. Okay, this has to be from something, right? Like, that's the car from the last game the developers made, and they left it here because they still have the model on the disc, right? Ah, oh, whatever. I'm gonna take the Happy Sunshine Heartmobile and show off some of the other areas. To get to the other areas in the game, you have to rescue a lot of civilians. For every ten people you rescue, a politician shows up in the stage. And if you rescue three politicians, because it is always three in video games, you have to fight a boss, which will then unlock another area. Also, look at the friggin' party rig on top of my ambulance! Like, this is one of my favorite add-ons. And adding more lights improves the minimap top right. You can see that it's zoomed out a lot and it's showing more stuff. Like, zombies show up with red, it shows civilians sooner and from further away. And it also shows the item pickups when they spawn, which they never do. And look at that handling! I'm better at this than I think. And of course I go to the one area that I haven't locked in this playthrough. Now. Oh. oh, and since we're on the topic, the second stage you unlock is an abandoned cityscape stage. It's not exactly the same as this one. It looks a lot more upmarket, but it's still a ruined city. And whoa! Okay. And the fact that the second verse is the same as the first doesn't really help the game. Especially since it's a hassle to get there. Kindly ignore that three-point turn there. I don't drive, that's... That's my excuse. Incidentally, this is the route I take when I'm developing new parts of the ambulance. Because there's a circuit around the outside of the city that's constantly spawning enemies in front of you. Oh, and if you get a high enough kill count, the game drops all pretense that it's trying to be original. Like, if you get a chain of 100 kills, your co-driver goes, It's a crazy! In such a way that makes lingering eye contact with the game that this one's trying to improve upon. And now we're in the desert. Because of course there's a desert. Isn't your city next to one of those? Why do I get the feeling that this is the one video my friends in Arizona are going to watch? Oh, whatever. This leads me to another point against the game. I can't navigate the desert by looking at the screen. I have to use the mini map. Less than 10% of the screen's real estate. And when you're doing that, your level design isn't fantastic. Also, those shifting sands are some of the hottest of garbage. Game. That is not cool. But since I am here and I used one of my turbo boosts, let's pick that guy up and take him home. Who knows? Maybe I'll run out of time and he'll turn into a zombie so I get to show that off. So when that happens, you have to drive headlong into a wall at full speed. You take some damage, but the zombie is thrown through the windshield and out of the car. And it'd probably look cool if you weren't looking at the back end all the time, but there you go. Alright, found the exit, so away we go! And you've earned those speed lines this time, game. Not like that first ambulance with its participation award in the Must Try Harder Olympics. And I kind of think that I put a lot more effort into that put-down than the developers did into making the game. 
Speaking of which, if I'd been in charge of making the game... Whoa, 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 hang on. All right. So on occasion, if you do not kill a zombie completely, they will cling to the ambulance. They screw around with the controls and you take damage. And basically, it serves as an incentive to hit the zombies head on and avoid glancing blows. Are they the same thing? I don't know. Whatever. Drive fast and hit things. You know? And you know what? I think I'm going to take the police car for a spin. It's going to be tricky because I haven't installed any of the body mods. I mean, I tried. But the car's rigging is slightly bigger than the actual model. So all the bolt-ons just float around it, making it look really weird. So I figured if I wasn't going to use it, at least it was going to sit in the garage and look pretty. I mean, really, I don't see the point of it, so I reckon that... Whoa! <laughs> okay! So, I guess the point of it is the godlike turning abilities. <laughs> but it's a shame that this is a video, because the controls on the ambulance are really loose, but on this car they are super tight and finicky, and it, it'd be nice to show that off. But seriously, look at that! That is great! That Hang on! Okay. So there's a bit around here that has a shortcut through a park, and I really want to find it. Mostly so I can do a hobgoblins gag. I mean, I know I just kind of did, but like, I'm sure that I will find a way. In the meantime, a thought that I was going to finish several years ago. If I was in charge of the development for this game, I would want to include, like, unique NPCs. Because every... Come on, game! Every time I go to start with this thought, you drag me down. Like if you have a zombie clinging to your vehicle, you have to wiggle the right jump the thumbstick to shake them off. And I was playing this game while Skyping with my friend Linot, and he said it sounds like I'm tasing someone when I do that, so hopefully that doesn't show up too much on the audio. And it looks like the other areas in the world are blocked off. Which is a shame, really, because I wanted to show off the forest stage. Anyway. Every survivor in the game is man, or woman, or soldier, or whatnot. But I throw in a couple of named guys with special effects. Like, if you drive to the very back of the forest or the desert, then you'll find... I don't know, Roy Disky. A magical talking CD-ROM with arms and legs. And he... There we go, he doubles your morale, but only if you can get him back in time. Which would involve some crazy driving. And... Maybe not having some zombies grabbing your car. <laughs> that was sensational, Andy. Brilliant steering. Anyway, there is one last thing that I want to show off before we finish the video. I'm going to head this ways and speak to the secretary once again and use her magic to transfer us to Earth 3, where there is a special surprise waiting for us. So take me away, the only sensibly dressed member of staff in this game. And while we wait, it's story time. I originally intended to play this game for my channel quite some time ago. I mean, I teased it like four years ago at the time of recording this, and it was part of my 200 subscriber special. But I kind of realized that this is it. Like, after the bit that I'm doing now, we will have seen everything the game has to offer. So it fits a quick look video, not so much an entire series. So now here, we are. Okay, heart skipped a beat for a second there because I totally thought that the boss fight music was my discs skipping and breaking. I have not had much luck with ancient electronics lately, let me tell you that. Whoa, well, that's not the way. So let's go this way. I really hope this is where I'm meant to be going. Oh, and so it is. So usually you fight the bosses in Central City and most of the roads are blocked off by fences made of bone and sinew, so you know, you're herded in the right direction. It's pretty hardcore. Oh, and speaking of hardcore, it's boss fighting time! Right after a cutscene. Sure, I know what Flo is. She's the nurse who brings me the pills, right? And no, that isn't a zero punctuation joke. Shut up! Nani? And that's about the extent of my conversational Japanese. I mean, I can say what, and I don't understand, and pass the tea. So I'm all set. 
And yeah, it's him again! This shy halut looking thing is also the first boss of the game. Incidentally, you defeat him exactly the same way as you defeat him now, so... You know, good job on the variety there, Programmer Dan. And yet, since there are no weapon pickups in the game, you defeat the boss, all of the bosses, in fact, by charging into them when the time is right. And this boss is actually the easiest, because the first two have obscene periods of invincibility. Although it does also help that I've got the fully upgraded party lights on the ambulance, because they make the boss show up on the minimap, so that's nice. Or it's nice in as much as a boss fight can be nice. Although what I find helps is reacting to this, and all video game bosses, as though you are Steve Irwin. You know, Crocky, it's a 40-foot sandworm! I'm gonna wrestle it! And I'll be honest with you guys, I myself wrestled with the idea of doing that joke at this point. So please direct all hate mail to anyone other than me. Blame Lionel. He's the one who told me to do it. Or more accurately, he didn't tell me not to, which is basically exactly the same thing. Right? Right. And have I just beaten the boss in like two minutes? Well, go me. To give you a comparison of scale, the boss fight before this one took me 20 minutes to beat. Like, actually 20 minutes. I timed it for the purposes of this video, because I was going to show it off. Oh, and of course he does the cypher thing where you can't beat him because he quits. Whatever, game. You didn't win. I won. I'm the cool guy. Anyway, that is a pretty comprehensive look at Zombie vs. Ambulance. And I thought there was going to be a cutscene right there. But usually the politicians are stood here, and they hand you the key to the city. But I guess that happened before the boss fight? Ah, well. Let's talk to some random passers-by, get some information about the situation. And totally not pat out the video. Oh, shut up, kid. You didn't see a flying monster. This isn't Silent Hill. This is a bad video game. What do you have to say for yourself? Oh, I am offended, good sir. You don't need help. I'm the help. And now I'm hurt. I'm gonna go stare at Nurse Twin Tails for a bit, see if that cheers me up. So join us next time for something else, and until next time, goodbye.